Off in a corner of a warehouse down in New Orleans, on every Saturday for the last two years, some volunteers have been remaking history. They're building the last assault craft of World War II, a stubby little plywood boat that could take a lot of fire, the last Higgins boat. Every American went ashore in World War II, whether it was North Africa, or Sicily, or Italy, or France, or in the Pacific Islands, went ashore on a boat built by Andrew Higgins in New Orleans. Historian Stephen Ambrose heard no less an authority than Dwight Eisenhower, the Supreme Commander, credit the Allies' victory in World War II to a small New Orleans boat builder. He said if Andy Higgins had not developed and then produced those Higgins boats, we never could have gone in over an open beach. We'd have had to change the whole strategy of the war. So he's the man who won the war for us. So Ambrose began creation of a national D-Day museum to open next year in New Orleans, the home of Andrew Higgins, and of the humble wooden boat that helped win the war. Coast Guard Lieutenant Jimmy Duckworth was in charge of finding an authentic World War II Higgins boat for the museum. But he discovered the years had taken their toll. So after the war, a lot of them were surplus and whatnot. They didn't hold up well in the water through years of use. And one by one, they all went to the bottom. Even though 21,000 were built, not one could be found. Then one day, an old veteran paid Jimmy Duckworth a visit. He sat on my desk and looked me in the eye and said, if I was half your age, I'd get off my butt and build one. 15 and a half inches. But where do you start if you're trying to make something so accurate and true that it deserves to be in a museum? We may have to end up welding a little strip in there. With someone who was there, Graham Haddock went to work for Andrew Higgins back in the 30s. He had a terrific imagination. And uh, uh, when I was a draftsman, he would come in and say, I had a dream last night, and I want you to put it on paper. One of the ideas Graham Haddock helped Higgins with was a shallow draft skiff used by fur trappers and oil explorers in the bayous of Louisiana. They called it a Eureka which is what the Marines said when they saw it. The Marines said, that's it. That's what we want. Because that Higgins boat could go right into the shore. And it only drew about that much water. The Marines asked if Higgins could modify the bow with a ramp so that in battle, men weighted down with gear could get off fast. Drop that ramp, and you got 30 men charging out, firing. So you've got a, you've got a platoon of men right away, right at that spot. Immediately, he accepted the idea, said, send them down, send the photo down, we'll do it. And they did it in a matter of days. Jerry Strahan is Andrew Higgins' biographer. He says Higgins would grasp an idea and run with it. With the added ramp, not only men, but material could be unloaded on the beaches. This would give the military the perfect link between the ships at sea and the shore. Orders for these landing craft poured in, and Higgins' company exploded from 50 employees to 20,000. Going so fast, the city closed access around their factory so that workers could build boats in the streets day and night. At that time, everybody that worked had a, an attitude that they were doing their bit for the war effort. They felt that there was a purpose in what they were doing. The boats were coming off the line so fast to go into action the Higgins employees would ride the freight trains to paint them. Building this last Higgins boat is a community effort. Local industries and companies that gave us everything from wood to nails to screws, the mahogany we needed, the woodworking equipment that you see here today, the facility we're in was donated. This is an original propeller. The next awesome challenge was to find fittings and run. hardware. The cleats for this boat are no longer produced. They raised the Higgins boat that had sunk nearby in Irish Bayou. This is about as good as we could do off the Irish Bayou wreck. That wouldn't work. So what we did is we took one and from its dimensions made a pattern and wound up with six beauties just like this that we'll install on the boat. The most significant find was an original Higgins armored steel ramp, a feature that made the Higgins boat great. Uh, I've been told by the men who rode these boats into battle that it was uh, pretty powerful to be hunkered down behind one of these things with bullets pinging off of the door. 
knowing that at any moment while you feel the boat ride up on the beach that your only protection in the world is about to disappear from in front of you. That moment was captured in the movie Saving Private Ryan. Just when to drop the ramp required skill. Too soon, and the men strapped with 80 pounds of gear would be thrown into deep water. To prevent Your such disasters, Andrew Higgins ran a training course. As the designer, builder of amphibious and landing craft equipment, it is proper. At his own expense, Higgins made 30,000 soldiers into boat drivers. Bring the boats on in and damn the obstacles. You must know your boat and what makes it tick. Richard McDerby was the chief instructor. For weeks, he would make them do 100 beach landings a day out on Lake Pontchartrain. Well, it was a lot of fear, a lot of worry. And the biggest job we had it was a guy that on the boat and he couldn't swim. He's worried about getting out of that boat or in the water than he is somebody shooting at him. So that's why we'd say, don't worry, we're going to put you up on the beach where you can walk off. Roy Redler was a 17-year-old Marine when he rode a Higgins boat onto Iwo Jima. They would, they would line them all up like racehorses, and then they would give the signal to head to the beach. The boat I was on began to sink before we got in, and it was too close to do anything about it, so they just kept driving, and it was just, just lunging into the, into the waves. Finally, we scraped bottom on the beach, and they dropped the ramp. And water and everything flowed out the front, but we made it. Don Summers drove a Higgins boat onto the beaches of the Philippines. Trying to drive a great big old, big old moving truck without any steering is what it's like. It's a great big slab of wood. That helped out. It helped. As the volunteers jockeyed the armored steel ramp into position, everyone could begin to imagine or remember what it was like coming at the shore with the bullets pinging off the door. The veterans call the ramp the gate to hell. So when that ramp's up in front of you, it's not nearly as spooky. But when you hit the beach and that ramp drops down, it's just like kicking the egg out of a end out of an egg crate. And there you are sitting there. <laughs> they said, well, man, did the guys not want to get off of the boat? No, there was no problem getting them off because when you drop that ramp right on a bare beach, they were looking for some tree to get behind or a hole to dig. So you never had any problem getting them off. I mean, they got off of there as fast as, fast as that thing hit the beach and started digging holes. That's it. This boat is a labor of love and respect for the men who fought the war and for the people who worked at Higgins. Well, anyway, that's what the boat's going to look like. In the National D-Day Museum, it will stand as a symbol of the war effort on the beaches and the home front. Historian Stephen Ambrose. This is a legacy to the men of D-Day. This is their memory. This is their legacy. It's what they did that we are honoring. And we honor a forgotten hero and his little boat that helped to win the war.